Dane Topkin, welcome to the Modern Sales Management Show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, uh, great to be connecting and, and great to be chatting. Um, really excited to talk about uh, sales and, and adjustments that businesses are having to make in these these times. Now, I'm so glad that, that we're connecting on this. I was uh, giving a presentation for the uh, our local HubSpot user group on uh, ways to set your sales team up for success in the era of, of a big shift towards remote selling. And uh, somebody from HubSpot was on the line. They said, you have to talk to Dane. I said, I know Dane. So I, I reached out to you because you just put together a course for HubSpot Academy on moving from a field sales team to a remote sales team. How, how's correct. that being received? Um, that's that's been received pretty well. Um, what we're finding, obviously, in these times, is that businesses are, are some have been operating online or operating with remote selling for extensive periods of time, um, but others are not, or they found some complexities in terms of the products that they have, and and are really finding it difficult to adjust to that online selling motion, where they depended heavily in the past on on selling in person and really all of that relationship and engagement uh, and that type of building to sell their products, that's being stripped away um, right now and, and businesses are having to make that adjustment. So one of the things we wanted to do at HubSpot Academy is we recognize this gap um, and that uh, a lot of businesses are potentially struggling with this adjustment. So how could we create some education and to a certain extent pull back the curtain on how we sell online at HubSpot and, and really lean into some of the experts that we have at HubSpot. So it, within the course, there's content that's not only relevant to businesses who are new to this uh, particular online selling motion, but um, businesses who've been selling online for extensive periods of time. So whether you've been selling online for years at this point and you're very comfortable, um, there's value within there. Um, whether that be related to tools or how to manage a remote team, but also for businesses who are having to make that shift right now, what are some of the things that you have to consider? What are uh, the reasons why other businesses have made the shift in the past and what some of those benefits they are? So it's not only limited to just people who are having to make a shift right now, um, but people who've been selling online for years as well. Is this a topic that was on your radar that, that you were drawn to? prior to the COVID-19 crisis? To a certain extent. So one of the things that we uh, were working on uh, prior to this was just, you know, learning how to, or helping our sales professionals learn how to close deals effectively and what techniques they could be using. And in light of, of um, COVID-19 and everything that had been happening, we pivoted that strategy to really provide our audience with content that will be value and relevant, not only to this time, um, but what will be relevant to the new normal as well. Because even when things uh, reopen and when things get to a point where they are a little bit more uh, or less restricted, uh, our perceptions of the sales process has changed and our interactions have changed as well. So. I tend to think of this not only as content that is extremely relevant right now to businesses who are needing to make this shift, but the content that's within there and the strategies that we're teaching will help businesses scale in the long term. And one of the, one of the ideas behind that is, you know, while some people are being forced or some businesses are being forced to operate solely online right now, um, they may shift to a hybrid sales uh, model, for example, where in the future, part of their process is online and certain parts are still in the field um, as well. Because, you know, with the adjustments we're having to make right now, and, and a lot of businesses will potentially think, well, I, I just don't think that it's going to be possible for us to sell online. Our products are too complex. Our demos are extremely complex. Um, some products are just not as well suited to sell online, and they're being forced to do that right now. Um, but it doesn't mean that you you're in the future, your entire process has to stay online as well. There are parts of your process that are more cost efficient uh, to have online as well. And then you can still have that in-person uh, engagement and, and thorough demonstration of the products that you're selling in the future as well. So it sounds like along with the, the systems and, and the process that has to shift, the part of it is a mindset shift. 
Yeah, that is um, uh, something we talk about a lot. Uh, that is a really big factor. And one of the, the first initial factors as well. Um, and the reason behind that is, as I'd mentioned a second ago, a lot of businesses can tend to operate under the assumption that our process cannot be done uh, online. Uh, if you think of medical equipment, for example, that has a, a complex demonstration process, it was really dependent on that in-person relationship. Um, and also there are a ton of misconceptions around remote sales, particularly remote sales reps, for example. Managers have fears of, will they be as productive? Will they be available? Will they be able to prioritize the right work? And one question that I found that I like to ask or pose um, to sales managers or people who are questioning whether remote sales can be as effective is really asking them, what were you doing in the field that you don't think you can do online? That's not to say that it will look exactly the same online as it does in the field. Listen, technology is different. Engagement looks a little bit different. Uh, interaction looks a little bit different. We have to do everything virtually. But there are ways that you can still run your demonstration online. There are ways you can still keep up physical engagement by really incorporating video into the entire uh, sales process, all the way from prospecting to close and, and not limiting yourself. Yes, we have to make significant adjustments, but that's a question I like to keep at the forefront of my mind is what was I doing in this physical environment that absolutely cannot be, be done online? And that often causes a lot of uh, leaders to think wait, maybe this can be done online. It's just going to look a little bit different. And that's where the mind shift or mindset shift comes into play uh, as well, because it's really embracing and recognizing a lot of what we're doing can be done online. It's just going to look a little bit different and we need to make some adjustments as well. Now, that's a good point. And I, I love how important it is to you to educate leaders on this. I love the way that you talk about it. So the, the audience uh, that's listening right now are uh, CEOs, chief revenue officers, VPs of sales. Let's talk about some of the, you know, everything isn't rosy when you move online. Let's talk about some of the challenges that people who manage sales teams are going to yeah. and have to overcome in, when they're moving to selling online. Gosh, that is definitely one of the um, most extensive uh, problems that we do face is really adjusting how we're going to manage sales reps or sales teams online. One of the first and foremost things is collaboration. Sales teams are extremely collaborative. If you're already operating in an inside sales motion where you have a particular office space and your entire sales teams on the floor, that drive by or quick, you know, touch point with your manager, all of that goes away. Um, we're remote. We don't have access to, while we may have access to each other um, through instant messaging platforms or things like that, we're not able to just walk over to someone and say, hey, I'm having some trouble with this deal. What did you use? Or I overheard you using this particular technique at this particular point. Could you help me with that? So communication has to be extremely um, important and prioritized. And that's both formal communication and informal communication. So those drive-bys and check-ins, those progress updates, your monthly check-ins hold a lot more weight because we don't have that physical access uh, anymore. Um, another thing is motivation. Uh, how do you keep your sales team engaged and motivated and energized? There are a lot of distractions uh, at home and, and you know, sales, sales people tend to love to learn from other sales people as well. Remote selling can prove tough at times because depending on your work environment, it's generally you at home in front of your computer, on the phone, on Zoom, uh, conducting deals or can, doing some prospecting or, or chatting with customers. And you don't have that shoulder to shoulder time with the rest of your sales uh, team to really feed off of some of that energy. So one of the things that sales managers really have to think about is traditionally when in in an inside sales environment where there's a sales floor, managers are really looking at you know, managing deals, making sure everything's on track, 
Now it shifts a little to focusing on how to keep your team energized. How do you make sure they're prioritizing the right work? One of the key tips uh, that one of our sales managers, Mindis Hankerson, had, had mentioned is how do you keep prioritization correct? And, and do your sales team, does your sales team have access to the important information they need in one central place, whether that's going to be your CRM uh, or some other central database that you have, but how can you eliminate some back and forth communication so that when your sales rep needs access to particular critical information, do they have that available right then and then? Is that easily accessible? Um, those are just a few of some of the adjustments or considerations. There's a ton more, but really one of the things that I think sales managers really have to to learn and, and pay attention to and be really intentional with is learning how to lead from afar. Um, leading looks a little bit different in a remote environment. You want to make sure your team has what they need, when they need it, and are you equipping your team with the right information, the right tools, and the right strategies so that they can sell uh, effectively online? Well, let's take that a level deeper. What does that look like? What do some of those look like? What does effective collaboration and community or bite-sized communication or giving them the information that they need what might that look like yeah uh one of the best uh tips that i've heard and again um this is uh, a tip from mendis uh, who's a sales manager at hubspot collaboration one of the things she had implemented with her uh fully remote sales team at hubspot was this buddy system right so ensuring that whether it be on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, you're ensuring that your sales reps are still able to get that time with other sales reps. And they're not siloed to their uh, remote environment where they may not have access to the other team as easily or as efficiently. So what she does is she generally pairs up a tenured rep with a less tenured rep to ensure that that mentoring, encouragement, motivation, career growth, et cetera, is still happening um, and that's something she's seen a massive amount of success with just in keeping the energy levels up um, of the team and and something she said has worked extremely well uh, for her i was fascinated by the way she had structured it um, by how thorough they were with it making sure that for an hour a week uh, each salesperson meets with another salesperson they can talk about the deals they're working challenges they're facing um, Whereas they're not as dependent on the manager for that feedback and they're still getting some of that uh, collaborative energy and environment uh, that they may have experienced on the sales floor. And you just have to be a little bit more um, intentional with it uh, as well. Another thing in terms of keeping some of that motivation up is really setting, sitting down as a manager with your sales rep and setting personalized non-arbitrary goals. Uh, one of the key tips I found is minimums where certain things need to be done in a certain day. And while some of those add value, it's really important for a manager to assess whether those activity minimums are being set um, to set up for real business impact, right? And they're not just activities that need to be done because we don't want to get into a place where we're gaming the system and just making sure Uh, success. Those are just um, a few uh, to name with regards to how to actually keep up some of that collaboration and encouragement. Uh, that, that's great. How do you keep remote sales reps as a manager? How do you keep them from getting sucked into admin tasks and online research? Yeah. Um, again, this is centralized information. So, it's almost as though we're taking the sales floor and we're the, the information that's in on the sales floor and putting it into a document, right? And I don't want to minimize the sales floor energy and say it can be put into a Google doc, but it's this idea of establishing a central place where all this wealth of information, whether that be important resources, metrics, 
how far on track we're to quota, what deals are at a critical stage, what needs to be worked urgently. How do you set up this uh, central place? Uh, for some people, it's the CRM. Um, for some people, it may be something else where they can access this information at any point in time. And one of the key things as you're thinking about that as well is something uh, that a lot of our teams do at HubSpot is an urgency matrix. How do I know and prioritize and make sure that my team is doing the right work at the right time? Which tasks are mission critical and which tasks can be done at a later stage when we have a little bit more free time? So there's so much responsibility on managers in, in a remote environment to set their team up for success. And it looks a little bit different than managing deals and that kind of stuff uh, as well. And you're really leaning into some sales enablement strategies to help your team be more successful. And like I said, that central place or that 30,000 foot view of where all your information and key points, key strategies are accessible is going to be critical to helping your team uh, be successful uh, throughout the sales process as well. Now that tool for prioritization is one of my favorite uh, resources in, in the course. And um, we will we'll make sure that that is uh, explained and, and linked to in the show notes. But I, Dane, I want to thank you uh, for this insight and conversation. I'll include a link to Dane, the, the course, and instructions of, uh, on how to access it in the show notes. It is uh, invaluable and something that's educating thousands and thousands of, uh, of businesses on how to move from, uh, re from field selling to remote selling. So before we wrap up, Dane, is there any final sales management advice that you want to give our audience? Yeah, I think, um, you know, these are trying times to be patient. Um, we're not going to get everything right uh, immediately. Some of these strategies are completely new uh, to some businesses. Some businesses have been operating for this, this way for an extensive period of time. Um, but you know, there are resources out there. As you mentioned, our course in particular is one of those helping businesses make that adjustment, but be patient with yourself, trial things out, and most importantly, find out what works for your team. Uh, that is the most important thing is the individuals on your team, your unique sales team, your unique process, find out what works best for you and then begin to implement those strategies around what works for your team so that your team is inspired, your team is engaged and your team is enabled um, and you can crush uh, some of those quotas that you have each month or each year. That's a good note to end on. It's not a one size fits all solution, but the yeah. framework you give will really uh, help people navigate this uh, in a more successful way. So yeah. that does it for this episode of the Modern Sales Management Show. Thank you for listening.